Hi everyone, so today I want to show you how to make this card. Now, this card, actually, um, I saw something on Antonio Makes' YouTube channel where he'd done, um, he called it Concertina Lantern Fold Card. Um, but I really liked it and I've had a bit of a fiddle with the, I made a prototype, had a bit of a fiddle with it and <laughs> ended up doing something completely different. So this is what I've turned it into. It folds flat for posting. Um, and it will fit in an envelope for a 6x6 six six card because the footprint actually measures um, it's about 5 and 5 eighths square um, so yeah so that's the front of it and obviously you could change it around so you could put that as the back if you wanted to I initially had that as the back and then when I made it I was like no, I actually I prefer that to be the front um, and then you've got your two panels on the back so you've got enough space to write then uh, my panels aren't quite stuck straight. That's because this was like the first time I'd ever made one. Um, so yeah, so the papers I used on this one were out of um, uh, Craft's Beautiful uh, Craft magazine. It was um, a pack. It was this pack that came free with it. Um, actually, West Design, which is interesting. But yeah, so um, but they come with these lovely double-sided papers. So I used those, and also um, a whole load of die-cut pieces. So I used those on on the. Um, on the card but since this was um something i'd seen on antonio makes his um youtube channel i thought it only right that i use his papers his digital kit for the one that we do today so that's what i'm going to do so i'm using the um papers out of his imperial indigo kit um and don't forget that you can get 10 percent off if you use louise 10 which is your co my code um if you go over to antoniomakes.com, use my code Louise ten, you get ten percent off all your, your orders. He has a minimum spend of five pounds, just because of like PayPal fees and website fees and the rest of it. Um, but yeah, go and have a look. It's going to be really. It's they got some really. He's got some really nice um, designs and papers and all sorts of bits and bobs over there. So go and have a look. Um, check him out. So for this card, you're going to need. Now I've used this uh set of blues and this is only 180 gsm so i wouldn't go for anything too thick i would go for something quite thinnish so the ones that i used here these were 200 gsm these papers uh these this card the background card um and that was about right so this is 180 so i'm hoping that will be okay as well i wouldn't go too thin i would go between 180 and maybe 210 gsm you don't want to go too thick either so yeah go for that this is um a hobby craft pack but i quite liked it because you've got all the different um papers in here and it's got that nice dark blue at the back as you can see i've cut into it quite a lot so what you need to do is if you get you're probably going to need um one and a bit sheets of a4 Okay, now what I've done, instead of cutting them into strips, which is what I did with this one, so with this one I actually cut all my strips out and then I scored them all. But then I was like, hang on a second, why am I bothering to score them all? Why don't I just, why don't I just, um, you know, cut them, score them first and then cut them? So that's what we're going to do today. So you need to get your A4 out and you're going to score it. I don't know if you can see my score line just about. So you're going to score it at one and seven eighths, at three and three quarters, five and five eighths, seven and a half, nine and three eighths, and eleven and a quarter. And then whatever you have left over on the edge there is your tab. So then you can go ahead and cut this down this way, lengthways, and you're going to cut them into um, one and seven eighths strips okay so we're going to do that now okay so you end up you need six strips in total okay so i managed to get four out of one a4 sheet and then took another sheet and got two out of it and then i was just left over with this so if so i can probably get another two out of this then so what i would do is if you wanted to i mean it's quite an involved card so obviously um but if you made two at a time then that would you know or the other thing as well is with this is you could extend it. So I've got three at the moment, but if I wanted to, I could maybe put another two either side. Um, I've actually got another idea for another card, a variation on this, uh, which will be coming soon. Um, hopefully nobody picked me to the post, but maybe people will. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's another option as well. So once you've got your um, once you've got your uh, strips. 
you're then going now okay so let me just explain a few things here so basically on the one this one here i actually put it together first and then i decorated it which is good because then you can see where to put things however it gets a bit tricky when you're sticking these inside pieces so i think what we're going to do and even with the outside pieces it was a little bit tricky i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a bit of a mix of decorating pre and decorating post so if we start by just going through and just folding all our strips um, mountain folding all of our strips to start with and then we will get into the um, differences in fold later so I'm just going to go ahead first and just fold everything um, as a mountain fold You should end up with six um, pieces all folded up like that. Right, if we take three of those pieces, and these are just going to be plain and simple, just join them together by the tabs like that. So I think what we need to do first is just on all of the tabs, we're going to put red tape, all of them, even the other three. red tape on all six of my strips I put three to one side and bring three in to work with so what we're going to do is we're just going to um, open them up now they're going to stick together um, how we would normally do a pillar so we're going to close one side and then close the other side on the top and that makes your um, little kind of hexagon shape however what I want to do is I want to put um, pattern paper on two of the sides so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, actually yeah, I'm going to put one on now okay so in here let me just try and explain to you so in here I've got obviously I can see the tab so I'd quite like to cover that tab up with a piece of pattern paper if possible so I think that square there and that square there are going to have pattern paper on them so that means if I open this up I can put a pattern piece here and then um, I will put a pattern piece there once I've made them up. So for these pattern pieces, you need in total, you need um, six pieces uh, of just pattern paper. If you want to mat and layer them, you can. I haven't just because of there's just so many squares on this um, card. So I didn't I didn't layer mine up. I've just kept it as pattern. The outside have mat and layers, but these inside pieces I didn't, didn't layer up okay so this is going to go in here so these six squares are one and five eighths by one and five eighths okay so I've done one so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that down like that take this off here fold that over the top like that and then that means I can then go and stick my next piece of pattern piece paper in there it is a bit tricky because you're going inside and it's also a bit tricky i'm not using wet glue um wet glue would be easier from a sticking down per point of view however it's not easier when you've got so many squares to stick down so yeah it swings around about to be honest so stuck those two down they're not stuck the best they're not very even but anyway, so that's those two done. I'm going to carry on and do the same again with these two here. Okay, so that's my um, two done. So that's how it's going to be. So the, the patterns are going to be in the bottom section there. 
and then you've got these two bits so that's how it's, it's going to fold flat like that okay so if you just make sure that it all folds they all fold flat like that with the two pattern pieces at the bottom there okay now what we're going to do is i think we are going to stick down the other pattern pieces now but i'm going to make a mark so i know which pieces need pattern paper okay we're going to do it with silver pen and hopefully you're ready to see it so that one that one and that one all need pattern that one needs a pattern this one here is going to be stuck this one here is going to be stuck this one needs a pattern turn it over this one needs a pattern this one's going to get stuck okay so that's those and then on this side that's going to get stuck that needs a pattern 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 okay so that's going to be like that and so then i know where i'm sticking them so now what i'm going to do is go ahead and stick down my outside patterns so for your outside patterns you need a total of 10 that are 10 mats that are one and five eighths by one and five eighths and you need 10 pattern pieces that are one and three eighths by one and three eighths so i've gone ahead and stuck them all down so i've got 10 here um so i'm going to go ahead now and stick these on so just to just let you know so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so i'm going to go ahead and stick these on everywhere i've got a cross Okay, so you should end up with that so you've got your that's the first one that's the second one and that's the third one okay so that's what you should end up with and all, obviously those pattern pieces are all in the bottom here so that we're going to do is go ahead and stick all three together now i am going to use wet glue for this i do find this a little bit easier so we're just going to take this here and we're going to put some glue on that square there and then take the one that goes next door and we're going to stick it down completely and utterly one and truly on top nice and straight in line this is why i use wet glue just to make sure just get rid of any glue strings that you've got okay so that's stuck those two together and then we're going to go ahead and stick the last one on the end So you should end up with that hopefully sort of a bit like a honeycomb now we're going to put that to one side for now and we're going to prepare the other pieces so the other three strips you want to put them together how we did just now with the other one so we're going to put no nothing going on the inside of this if you want to you can but i didn't put anything on the inside of this um so just literally fold down and then stick down so we're just going to fold these into place like that and also when you do it if you find that you've got a little bit too much of a tab there you can go ahead and cut that off i'm just going to leave it for now uh, if it bothers me later then i will um i will take it off you also might find like i have here i haven't quite trimmed my um pieces quite properly so i've got actually like a little extra bit there so i'm just going to get a pair of scissors and just trim that little extra it off so it's completely in line okay so then you want to take your three pieces work out what where you want your tab to be i've actually done it so that the tab's kind of there so looking from the front you're not really going to see it um and then what you're going to do is you're just going to you can have it as a, as a hexagon but the back one you're just going to pop in so you're going to make it like that okay like a little arrow and you're going to do that with all three of your pieces so just work out where your um your arrow you know you want your front to be and your tab and whatever and then just fold it down make sure you burnish it because it might start arguing with you so that's that one and then 
this one here like this. So just give it a good burnish down. So you've got three, three arrows. And then the one in the middle, you're just going to turn that round because that's actually going to face the other way, like that. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our three pieces, our three arrows, we're going to stick them in. So take your first one. So on this square here and this square here, you're going to put glue or tape. I would do, I would advise doing wet glue for this. If you don't get on with wet glue, you can use red tape. Um, if you are using red tape, then uh, you might want to do one side, then the other. Okay, so then I'm going to take it. Now, this is the bit I want sticking out the front. So I'm going to take my hexagon and it's going to go like that. So I'm going to put this up this way. I'm going to bring this into place. And then we're going to stick that in like that and then fold the whole thing flat and stick it down. Okay, and you want to make sure that you've got it nicely into place. That's why I kind of stick it to this top bit first and then press it down and make sure that that's a nice right angle you've got going on there. Okay, so that's that one done. So as you can see that. That's what it looks like. I'm going to stand up and have a look for the camera so I can see what you can see. So you can see the, the way it's popping in there. A bit from the back. Okay, and we're going to do the same as that, but we're going to do this on this, this one here. So that's going to be forward as well like that. Okay, so again, we go ahead and we take the glue and we're going to put it on the top of the piece. Also on the bottom piece. So you're only putting it on this square here where you've got all the folding you're not putting it on this end piece so if you have a look it's just where this arrow this like end piece is that's where you put in your your thing and then we're going to turn this around this just gets a bit tricky i'm going to stick that in there like that oh and then i'm going to stick it in underneath as well so i fold it all flat and you can use the one that you've already stuck down to make sure it all lines up which it does yeah, that looks good. Fabulous. So that's that done. And then we're going to turn it round the other way. And this one is going to go in like that. So it's sticking the opposite way. So we're going to, again, put glue on this square here. And on this square here. And then I'm going to take my thing, put that in there, make sure it's kind of straight. Just get it into place and then press the whole thing down and stick it into place. So you should end up with a nice cross there. And you should end up with it looking good, hopefully. So then when you open it up, you've got that, which will be my back. You can make that the front if you want. And you've got that which is going to be the front now i had originally planned to do it this way around and to have something kind of sticking off the front here but the only problem is then when you fold it it'll have to fold off to the side and then it'll make it bigger so if you want to do that you can but you need to make a bigger envelope for it so that's your um, main thing done so that's the front okay so now we're going to go ahead and stick our other pattern pieces on so you're going to need for this for the inside you're going to need um, four pieces of pattern paper that are, well, four pieces of mat that are one and five eighths by one and five eighths and four pattern pieces that are one and three eighths by one and three eighths. And what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to stick them here and here and also here and here. OK, so they're the two, basically the single squares. This section here. You can either do a single squares if you want to, or you can do what I did here, make a rectangle. So I'm going to do a rectangle. Um, I'm actually, no, I'm probably going to do squares this time. I'm going to do squares this time around, I think. Um, you have to be careful because you do end up with a little bit of a bulk, a bulky seam just there. And so if you're not careful, you can end up with a crease. And actually under this topper, I do have a bit of a crease. Uh, it doesn't matter too much, so I've covered it up. On the back, you can see it more. So can you see here, I've got a bit of a crease there. So that's the only problem with doing a rectangle. I like the look of a rectangle, but um, it can prove problematic. 
so if you are doing that then you would need one two three four five six you'd need 12 well no actually wouldn't you need six seven eight you'd need eight because you do need to do rectangles here so you can write your message so you'd need eight in total so i'm going to have to go and cut myself out some more of these but i'll stick these four down first um, and then i will go and cut another four Okay, so I've cut out, I've done, no, I haven't cut out, I've stuck down my pattern piece, my four pattern pieces there. Now, when you come to sticking these bits in, it is a bit tricky. So if you want to, you can just kind of flatten it a bit, so it's almost like a box, and then just pop it up so it pops forward like this, and then you can stick it down. So I'm going to do the same for, I'm not going to say for this one, because this is going to be the back. So this is going to have a, a nice um, long piece on it. Um, but on the front here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut out my pieces for that bit there. Okay, so I've cut out my four extra squares and I'm going to stick them at the front there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and stuck those down. Now you might have seen me possibly in there. If you wanted to and flick that forward, you could do it like that, which is the way Antonio first did his. So he had it like that on both sides, so that way and on the back the same. Um, I wanted to do mine with the ink because I quite like that kind of following chevron effect that you kind of get when you kind of look at an angle. Um, so yeah, so that's what it looks like anyway now so far. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add um, the greeting on the front and then we'll stick the white pieces on the back. Okay, so then I've just got two pieces that are one and five eighths by three and a half. If I turn this round, they are gonna go on this back section here. Now you wanna make sure that, that is quite good card. So I've used about a two, uh, I think it's about a 280 GSM for that, just so that it's nice and strong. So I'm going to have a piece there and a piece there. If you want a greeting on it, stamp it on there now before you stick it down. Okay, so that's the back of it finished so the whole thing as i said folds down flat and will fit in an envelope for a six by six card it actually measures about five and five eighths um height um and then just open it up and it sits oh it's upside down sorry open it up and it sits like that on your desk and it's just quite nice i quite like it as i said if you wanted to you could have instead of having one front one back one front you could pop it so they're all front they're all popping out um, I have got another idea, another variation on this. Um, so yeah, so hopefully you'll have a go. Please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss a video or a live stream or a post or anything else I do. And we will see you next time. Bye.